What's your least favorite show? That gets my goat. So, hey, this is Dupo Remo. Dupo. Dupo Remo, yes. That's what I'll never get Dune used to. Dune Steve it. podcast recording month. So, Dupo Remo. Uh, what did you think of the kid in Real Steel? I thought he was pretty good. I liked him. I thought he did a good job. I'd never seen him in anything. I yeah, me think. neither. It's funny because every time I see a kid now, I saw that kid come on there because we'd. Also, when we watched Real Steel, they showed a trailer for that movie, Hugo. Mm -hmm. And you turned me, so so this is the guy that they cast as Ender? And I said, I I think so. That's what I heard. And yeah, then that kid comes on in Real Steel. And I was like, hmm, who could they cast this kid as? He could be Peter. I don't know who. (laughs) I can't remember all the characters. If I remember right, they were all from various nationalities. So there's only so many uh, plain old white kids that they could. Well, Bean was Caucasian, I would imagine. Although he doesn't have to be. Although he was Niederlander, if I remember right. Oh, is that right? Well, that's what happened in the... Uh, Don't go by those. In those shadow books. But, I mean, there's hot soup and there's... Uh, Petra Arcanian. Yeah, Petra and there's Bonso Madrid, et cetera, et cetera. There's folks from every different nation. So I, I suppose that probably uh, requires a certain type of kid to play that uh, character. But uh, yeah, Well, the great time, thing is... They're all in the Los Angeles area. Every yeah. one of those little nationality kids. Yeah, every time I see a kid on a movie now, although I think of that, oh, I wonder if they could be a character in that Ender's Game movie. Oh, did, hey, did Anakin Skywalker, baby Anakin, have the mop top hair? He did. Yeah, it was really pretty shaggy. It wasn't as bad as some, but yeah, it was pretty shaggy. What I wanted to talk about can go hand in hand with, okay, I just mentioned Jake Lloyd. Mm-hmm. Honestly, in the last episode, I talked about Haley Joel Osment being the greatest child actor of our generation it wasn't really of our generation it was the generation after ours uh-huh. i think of our generation it was probably drew barrymore can you think of anybody else from our generation that was talking kids that are the same age as us well ish uh michael j fox <laughs> although that guy was actually 25 when he was playing 12 year olds so that probably doesn't count very um, true I'm not sure. Uh, Tina Yothers. No, I don't know. Oh, you monster. (laughs) I don't know. Yeah, you're probably right. Although Drew Barrymore was like strung out on crack by the time that she was old enough to be a good child actor. She was, but it didn't affect her performances. She was a great little actress, man. And it probably came from upbringing and having grandparents that were actors and all that stuff. But you look at Jake Lloyd. I mean, The Phantom Menace is being re-released in theaters any minute now. Uh, now (laughs) but i mean it's so obvious that that kid was cast because of the way he looked because he was a cute kid he was a good looking little kid Mm -hmm. but not on talent i mean i i I don't know well we're talking about george lucas doing the casting here so there's not a surprise really when it comes down i mean now we know that but i guess so but it seems like on the DVD, there were auditions or somewhere they released auditions of different kids to do Anakin. Every one of them was better. <laughs> Every one that they showed was better than Jake Lloyd. I mean, honestly, he, he was just really, really bad. And if you've ever seen Jingle All the Way, which is the movie he did mm-hmm. a couple of years yeah, before, he was worse. He made Schwarzenegger look like Olivier in that. I mean, he was terrible. I, I, not just terrible – like on a level of seeing a little kid in a movie, but terrible like elementary school play level. where you, the, It I, was like that guy going, why did she do this? It was Natasha. She said she'd be here. Maybe. Go check out our incentive episode for an explanation yeah. on that. You know, it seems in my mind that there's going to be two trains of thought or two two ways to go when you're casting a child actor. And one is talent. Mm -hmm. This kid rocked the audition. This kid was great. And the other is good looking kid. Oh, there's good looking. Yeah, cuteness. But every once in a while, you'll see the ugliest little bastard (laughs) in a movie. And maybe that's mean to say, but I don't care. But I I, I remember when you and I were young, Indian in the Cupboard came out. I was going to, the second you said an ugly little bastard, I was just going to say, okay, the ugliest, the ugliest child ever captured on film. (laughs) And we're not excluding burn victims here, kids. I don't know what happened to that kid that played Omri in that movie, but 
Oh my goodness, was he a funny looking kid. He was so messed up and I just, what was it about him that would make, it, it wasn't like he was an amazing actor or something. So what about it caused these people to want to cast him? All I can remember from that movie, and the funny thing is I loved that book when I was a kid. I read that in grade school and I just thought, oh, I love this book. And I, you know, in the last few years, we got that book. Uh, we were up at my wife's parents' house and they're teachers. So they get like tons of leftover books when they do those scholastic book orders and stuff like a certain amount of books get ordered by the class and then the teacher gets you know stuff to order for their class too and so they had all these books in their house and yeah Indian in the cupboard was one I pulled it out read it to my kids they loved it really enjoyed it and god that movie I, I even said that after I read them the movie I'm like yeah I could show you guys the movie but you'd have nightmares from it <laughs> make can, the bad thing go away you could Dad. see the ugliest kid ever funny and, and there was another one recently i'm trying to remember what it was where i was just like whoa <laughs> next stop ugly town <laughs> wait a minute well, why did they cast a troll is this turned into a fantasy movie there's a troll in this film <laughs> Shoot, I wish I could remember what movie it was because it was it was a 2011 or 2012. Well, it couldn't be 2012 or we would know it. But it was a 2011 movie where I was just like, whoa, that must be another one of Will Smith's kids. Although, frankly, Will Smith's kids are pretty good looking. Yeah, that's going to be hard for that to not be the case. But, you know, if it's a producer's kid or something like that, yeah, where you're just like, who? So that's something that we were talking about just today is the Harry Potter kids. I think for the most part, it's probably fair to say they were cast based on their talent. Somewhat on their looks, Tom obviously. Felton. Maybe Tom Felton was cast. As, well, I, I think we talked about it. Tom Felton, who ultimately was Malfoy, auditioned for Harry. He auditioned for Ron. And I think he has brown hair in real life. And they said, well, we'll give you Malfoy, but you have to dye your hair and be spat upon every pub you enter for the next 20 years <laughs> no people won't even recognize him anymore i'll tell you that much because yeah we were talking about that on my wife's facebook account there was a picture it had all the four most prominent of the kids that had ron harry malfoy and neville and the quote underneath at the bottom was like yeah that, that awkward moment when Neville becomes the hottest and you see the picture it's a post movie picture or it's just yeah yeah it's like from this year it's like really really recently taken picture and it's just insane like you know Harry he's always been a little funny looking and he grew up to be that way and uh you know we've seen Ron and how funny looking he got as he grew older and older and Malfoy kind of did the same thing. He started out with this cherub-looking, little blonde, white-haired, amazing-looking thing. And yeah, as he got older and older, he, what people do, they tend to grow uh, bigger noses and et cetera, et cetera, as they get bigger. But yeah, the weird thing was, like, Neville was all, like, the tallest one. He's, like, in the best shape. He's all, like, buff. And it's just insane. Let me see if I can find it real quick and show it to you. We can get your reaction. <laughs> look at those dudes but yeah look at them. i mean they all look like sallow and their eyes are all sunken and like they look skinny and goofy and long-necked and then you look at neville and he's all like hi How some people going, confuse me for tom cruise who would have thought that the, the the kid that they cast as the nerd and the goofball winds up to be the one that's the best looking of them all? Well, good. Good for him, man. Yeah. I always liked Neville. Uh, not that he's a real person. <laughs> he's like, yeah, you remember when I uh, cut off that snake's head? You want to go someplace? <laughs> but yeah, the, the, the uh, Daniel Radcliffe, uh, almost all the time when they cast these child actors, it's because they are smaller than their age. They can play younger yeah. and all that. But a lot of times they stay small yeah. and their proportions don't ever get right. And so you'll get sideshow freaks like the goddamn <laughs> Olsen twins. Or, or you'll get poor M Michael, Michael J. Fox. J. Fox that, who... You know, Michael J. Fox is a good looking guy and all that, but he is little. I mean, you know, yeah. never. He, he managed to have a career at least despite his diminutive size, but. Uh, right, but most of them, I think they hit an age where you're just like, ooh. 
Yeah. And yeah, I think Dakota Fanning is like on the cover of Cosmo this month or whatever. She's never going to look right, folks. You can try and shove it down our throats that she is attractive. She's not. <laughs> don't do that. Don't don't tell me that somebody that's not attractive is attractive because there are people they'll tell you enough times where you'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I would do Zelda Rubenstein. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, you know what? I'm sorry. No. It could be worse. She could be like a Gary Coleman that never achieves normal height. I hear you. The, Gary Coleman was cute the day that he died. Goes but, around wearing children's cowboy boots and he's, stuff. He's an adorable corpse even as we speak. Yeah, there is that. But yeah, that's a, that's an interesting thing, the whole child actor syndrome. They very rarely turn into attractive adults. <laughs> it's a, Sorry, that's just how it is because they, we look for certain characteristics those are attractive as a child, not in a sexual way, but in a that is cute kind of right. way. But those same features as an adult don't look right. You know, right. the great big eyes or buck teeth that are adorable in a child are not adorable in an adult. And it's just, yeah, one in a hundred acute child actors grows up to be cute. Yeah, going back to that, again, you've got your... Uh... Drew Barrymore, who uh, was a cute kid and wound up being a cute adult, doesn't happen very often. I think girls at least have a better time of it because girls aren't expected to be normal size necessarily. You can be a short girl and be just fine. You can be a Natalie Portman and be like five foot tall and that's just fine. They'll have you stand on a box if they need a kissing scene or whatever. Um, whereas... Yeah, in reverse, if the leading man is shorter than the leading woman, that tends to cause problems, although somehow Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman made it work a time or two. Well, I, I remember after Nicole Kidman and Cruise divorced that she was interviewed and she said, thank God I can wear high heels again. <laughs> I was like, wow. It, it also kind of goes hand in hand with what we were saying yesterday about the femininity of the mop top haircut or whatever right like the little nose or you know whatever it might be that are attractive because their feminine characteristics don't work on a guy once they reach you know puberty or beyond but you know you want your women to be feminine still right kind of thing and and so yeah you're right a, a lot of times a cute girl could still be a cute woman but a lot of times they stay small or a lot of times it just doesn't work. And they're like, oh, whew. the Olsen twins are an enigma to me because they were ugly little kids. Ugly. Troll like <laughs> goblin creatures of darkness. Still are just taller and yeah, skinny. I, I don't feelings either way towards the Olsen twins. Don't really matter to me. You knew somebody's gosh, who was it? Remember, he was just like, oh, only one year, six more months till Olsen twins become legal. Who was that guy? I don't remember. That is pretty creepy. That whole thing. Oh, I can't wait till they become legal. I was like, well, because you're turning down their proposals. Right. right now, yeah. You're... It's just like right now they keep asking you. And you have to say, no, no, you're jailbait still. Not yet. Yeah. I don't get that whole thing. But anyways, yeah, I guess uh, we, we need to wrap this up because it's supposed to be short. Just like Gary Coleman. Oh, come on, man. You got to leave him alone. Wait, you said it. I didn't. Yeah, leave him alone. Jeez. All right. Thanks for listening to another Duporemo. Are we really calling it that? No. Okay. Good night. See you. That Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Apparently, the creative in Creative Commons doesn't mean anything. 